Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Darian Jones. I'm the Caregiver Education and Digital Specialist at Care Partners. Um, happy Monday, everyone. Uh, we took a break over the weekend with these hot topic segments, but we're back. And we have a really great guest today. Cheryl McClure is the CEO of Your First Care. Um, it's a home care agency, and she's going to be telling us some great at-home activities and things to do together to help keep us entertained right now. Um, I do want to remind everyone that we'd love to hear about what you're doing at home, how you're staying entertained, um, and just to hear from you. We miss you guys so much. Um, so if you have any stories or anything to share, we'd love to hear from you. Um, you can email info at carepartnerstexas.org. And I also did want to remind everyone that we're doing um, teleconference common ground support groups twice a week. So tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., Tuesday, and on Thursday at 2 p.m., We'll be, um, you can find some more information about how to get involved with that on our website. Um, and with that, um, we are going to bring our guest out. Um, hi, Cheryl. Hi, Darian. Hi, everyone. Thank you. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Can you tell us just a little bit about yourself and about your first? Absolutely. Um, your first is considered private duty, and we care for loved ones wherever home is. So we are in people's brick and mortar home. We are in independent living communities. We're in nursing homes and wherever um, that home is to provide that extra care that people need. Um, we all of our staff are certified, which in this day and age is really coming in handy. Um, they're all CNAs, EMTs. Uh, Hopefully everybody knows those acronyms, certified nurse assistants and that. So they're really good at what they do, but really able to spot a lot of, um, you know, morbidities and things that might be coming on this day. I mean, just given the, you know, kind of the atmosphere that we have going on, it's we specialize in cognitive impairment. Along with that comes a lot of, you know, anxiety, some depression, things like that. So it really um, is helpful for staff to have that training to kind of be able to sit and talk to people because I think, you know, the most calm person can have a little bit of anxiety in this kind of situation that we're going through, but keeping everyone calm, practicing yoga, or even I'm going to talk a little bit today about seated exercises, things like that. Um, it really makes a big difference, but we are honored to care for people um, still today. We're honored. We are so grateful that We've been able to keep every single client that we have safe. Every one of our caregivers are all safe. We have no COVID, which that's what we're striving for. So, you know, it is just a different day and time. But you know what? It's a lot of things are for the better. I think we're going to find um, we're going to come away with some really good things out of all of this. Yeah, it's been an interesting time for sure. But I think it's been a learning time for everyone. I know for us, um, it really got us ready for something Ever happens in the future, we have a better plan in place. Um, but today, we're going to be talking about different activities we can do at the home and different ways to stay connected and just keep ourselves entertained. Um, and now we have a few people on. I'd love to send out the question: What have you guys been doing at home to stay entertained or and just keep your spirits up? So feel free to comment at any time. We'll also be answering your questions. Um, and just let us know, chime in, tell us what you guys have been up to. Um, but I'll just turn it over to Carol for now. We can go ahead and get started. Okay, thank you, Darian. So um, I know one thing that I want everyone to keep in mind, um, what a lot of people are feeling right now is kind of shut in, stuck in the house, looking for things to do. I think more people have cleaner homes than they've ever had before. Maybe your things you've been that get to do list. But keeping in mind that we recognize our older adults, um, this is kind of a normal day for them. I mean, and there are a lot that are active that they do are, you know, can get out of their homes, but a lot of them um, don't have a lot of activities. They are at home, they watch television, they may have a few visitors. So keeping that in mind, it's always wonderful to kind of experience and maybe us be able to take a different look at, you know, what's kind of going on in their life. But there are so many different things that we can do and not all of them involve um, family members even getting, you know, having to sit there with someone and entertain them. Um, you know, typical things that even my daughter and I made a tradition to do was crossword puzzles, you know, and or large um, 
big puzzles that you put together. They, you know, a lot of places you can even get online have very large piece puzzles, which make it very easy for people to handle that may have dexterity problems or vision, you know, some vision issues. Um, and so those are very much, you can sit down, you can leave them as soon as you, you know, and just do them as often as you want. Card making is a wonderful thing to be doing right now. And getting very creative with card making is a way for you to stay in touch, keep connected. You know, maybe even if you're allowed to get out with a mask on, walk to the mailbox, put it in and brighten up somebody else's day. So we will have online, I do believe, um, some access to ideas, but using, you know, feathers and buttons and ribbon and really um, brightening someone's spirits by making cards. So whether it's getting ready for Christmas and getting your Christmas cards together now that are homemade or just to say, hi, I'm thinking about you. Um, it's always nice to get something in the mail. Something that I think uh, makes it difficult when we're not so much able to get out and walk around or even, you know, for a lot of us that are older, um, being able to walk to the car, get in the car, go to a grocery store or just go shopping with a loved one. That is a form of exercise. And when we are confined more toward, you know, into the home, um, it doesn't have to stop there. There is a program through the Texas um, Health and Human Services, the De Texas Department of Aging, on, it's called Texercise. Uh, I will, can give you a lot of different information, but they will actually mail you. You can do it online, request it. They'll mail you a, um, a disc that you can put into a computer or into a DVD player. It also comes with a booklet that has all of the instructions on how to do some wonderful exercises. And it's all geared toward our older adults. So they're low impact, high benefit, um, least amount of fall risk, a lot of them are seated, you're in your chair. So working off some of that energy definitely helps you sleep better at night. Um, something else is memory type games. Uh, we tend to, when we are not you know, fully engaged or maybe we talk uh, here and there, but getting away from a little bit of our everyday life, Memory games, memory things that are you wouldn't even consider being memory um, are extremely important. And there's a lot of different types of things that we can do. Um, one is really easy and kind of fun. Um, we put things on a tray, just pick any kind of tray. I don't care if it's a cookie sheet. And you will place, have somebody place, you know, 5, 10, 15, depending on how courageous you are and think how good your memory is. But you put them on a cookie sheet and cover it with a towel, carry it into the person, give them about one or two minutes to really look over that tray really well, take it away and on a piece of paper, on paper, write down how many items that you can remember that were on that tray. And this is a way to train our brain too, um, to really start you know, remembering things, bringing back some of that recognition, um, training that for cognitive impairment. Um, scrapbooking. That's always one that's fun, especially right now, to be able to look back when this time is over with and this too shall pass, to keep kind of a, a daily diary or something that was funny or something that was said, um, something interesting, but just about your life and times, you could even take it back further and do memoirs, if you will, so that you know your family um, can actually enjoy them. And this is good for anyone. Um, one of the little secrets that I have myself is I send myself emails all the time, especially if somebody's making me not quite so happy about something and I wanna be happy. So I will, or if I have a good idea, I just shoot an email to myself and I read it and I figure out, well, that sounds like a good idea or no, what were you thinking? But memories and memoirs are so awesome and having a scrapbook, something to go back and you can even, like I said, look back over this time. Um, balloon volleyball, and it's done by sitting in a chair. And it's, it's really, especially if you have some younger people at home with you, you just play across from each other, you know, by batting a balloon back and forth. Um, it's exercise, it will actually get you to build up a sweat, so you know that you're actually moving those limbs and, you know, again, keeping some activity going. And a balloon doesn't take anything to hit it, and it's actually a lot of fun. Um, you'll find yourself laughing, trust me, especially when someone pops you in the face with, a, with the balloon. Um, music therapy. This is something that everybody, we listen to music and can actually control our moods. Um, something a little more somber, of course, is going to put you in more of a mellow mood. But 
something maybe a little bit more upbeat, listening to your favorite tunes from whenever, if it's back to the 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, 30s, whatever. We love to have them downloaded onto, a lot of families do have a little iPod, which is like a little music device. And you can actually hook them up to little earbuds that go in your ear. And you can sit for an hour and just listen to music. And it really does calm the soul. Um, some people like to get very, um, just really into it. And we do things like if you don't play a music instrument, you can take something as simple as a coffee can with the lid on it, an empty one. And you can actually pat the top and keep time to the music. And it's like using bongos. And it's actually a lot of fun. We, we kind of laugh at ourselves, but it's, it's fun. It's interesting. You're keeping time with the beat. And of course, there's always the beloved art therapy. Um, and I really, you know, like to encourage people to think outside the box with this. Using, making jewelry, and even if you have dexterity problems or even eyesight problems, they online again, you can order and receive very inexpensively large beads, even very beautiful beads that can be strung on some plastic, you know, like or that stretchy type of string that you can easily just tie in a knot. You can make some jewelry, maybe even start working on some Christmas presents for people. Um, that's a wonderful uh, craft making type of idea. Um, mosaic art, a lot of people love to do mosaic art. Well, we should have had this podcast last week because I could have said, everybody that dyed Easter eggs, save your Easter egg colored shells, let them dry out. And that's a very cheap, way to use those little cracked shells as a mosaic tile and you can make wonderful pictures out of them there's always um the little things again you can get things online um making stained glass where it's actually painted with a special paint and you do like a, a hang it in the windows and it catches the light they're just beautiful again that's another great idea for um, a christmas present or a birthday present for someone that you know there's painting, there are, you know, in door hangers that you can make to identify your space and your own um, bedroom or place in the home. Um, of course, coloring with color books and that, we're not talking the kitty ones, we're talking about really nice, fun adult color books and they make them that you use with colored pencils and they're beautiful. You can also make wind chimes at home and you can make them very inexpensively with a lot of things you just have around the house, whether they're with little pieces of wood, whether they're with pieces of glass or tin and be creative, very creative. And it's just listening to it. I have wind chimes hanging in my backyard. And when I talk to my mother, she's always saying, what's that beautiful sound in the background? It's my wind chimes. So it's always um, just a pleasant thing that makes me smile. There's rock painting. You know, like I said, there are so many different types of activities that we can do with art. Gardening. Now, most people think that, you know, we've got to go dig in the soil out back. Well, you can plant vegetables. You can plant fruits. You can even plant little trees in pots. Um, you know, they and a lot of them, uh, assuming that the pot, you can start with a small pot and get them to a bigger pot. It doesn't even have to be anything expensive. Just pots you might have in your backyard and just transplant them. But strawberries and um, peppers and green beans and all types of things you can actually grow in your pots. Um, another thing for gardening is doing a nature walk in your own backyard. Um, bird walk, incorporate bird watching into that. And it's kind of, this is a cross between kind of gardening, but an art therapy. I put a little, um, so hopefully you'll have access to this. Um, it's called cookie cutter bird feelers and they literally are made they're just eight simple steps and you can use a cookie cutter and make your own different types of bird hangers. You just poke a hole through it, hang it with a string and hang it on something in your backyard and watch the birds come and just peck at it and eat it. And it, they're fascinating and they're really fun. Um, flower arranging. And for those men at home, if you're just not so into um, doing flower arranging or anything like that, have you ever wondered how a florist got a white carnation to turn blue on one side or green on the other? Um, it's a cute little thing you do, an experiment. Take the stem of a carnation, cut it up the middle, put each half into a glass of colored food coloring like you'd be dyeing Easter eggs, and watch the stem actually soak up the food coloring, and it will change the color of that carnation or whatever flower you have. So those are always fun things to do. 
um, games. And uh, forgive me if I'm whipping through this. Um, I know that all of this is supposed to be accessed um, online for you, but I know my time and your time is very valuable and limited. I Am did I really just want to jump in real quick. No, no, no. I just want to jump in real quick and let everyone know that, yes, the, the resource list that Cheryl's talking about, um, I put in the comments. So it's going to be a PDF that you guys can access and everything that she's talking about. There's a list of all of these things. And she has even the instructions for some of the things like the birdhouse and um, some other things like that. So be sure to check the comments um, because there's a document for you guys. Awesome. Right, that's all. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Darren. Okay. So, um, you know, going kind of to games, we always think of games as being for children and they're really not. Um, there are obviously, and I'm not talking about spin the bottle or anything like that, but there are so many fun games aside from even board games. Um, I enjoy playing a game of Monopoly or Trouble or we even do Jeopardy. Um, we will do Family Feud if you've got several people in the home and Family Feud is fun. You can find a lot of the original questions online if you Google Family Feud. You don't have to buy a board game for it. Um, and it's it'll actually say survey says, and I mean, it is so much fun. Um, prior to this virus that we have in kind of our little quarantine right now, um, we, we do something called Memory Monday. And every Monday we have a community we go to and we gather um, a lot of the older adults that live in the community. And we do a lot of these things that I'm talking about um, and they love it, they enjoy it. They just can't wait for Mondays to come. But um, games, we have one that we will scramble and again, this is kind of a game, but it's also for memory and it kind of challenges you a little bit. It's, you scramble a sentence. So it could say, I really like it when you go to the store and buy me something special. And instead of putting that sentence like it's supposed to be put, you scramble the words around in that sentence and then the person has to figure out how to unscramble. What did the sentence actually say? These kind of challenge us a little bit, um, make us kind of think. And sometimes it's surprising because somebody can use those words to uh, come up with a sentence that wasn't even what you said in the first place, but it works and it is using all those words. There is name that tune. That also could be used under music therapy. Um, we will do, um, even our family will sit around and put out, especially this day and age, when I was growing up, they used to give you the artist, the name of the tune, everything on the radio. They don't even do that anymore. I guess we're just supposed to know but, or Google it. <laughs> so you would just take a, a song, start playing part of it, and then have to name that tune. We've done it where we've done name that instrument, where online you can actually find different sounds of just about every instrument that's ever been made or is out there, whether it's a violin or a tuba. But it's always interesting to challenge ourselves or challenge our older adults to kind of name that instrument. Um, if you want to get really clever and have um, time, we like to do something that is, um, what is my profession? And it's almost kind of like charades in a way where you will um, kind of act out something. So um, if I'm a carpenter, I might be hammering. I might be, or if I'm a skier, you know, I might ski. But it's always fun to watch people act things out and then them try to guess what's your profession. Um, Again, like I said, the various board games, there's indoor and outdoor scavenger hunts. And we do this with our older adults all the time. I mean, kids aren't the only one that love this. We'll take things and just put them around and we'll challenge, even if you have one or two people or even just one person, you can hide some little hidden gems around the house or hide them in the backyard or somewhere around and see how long it takes you to get them all. You can make it a competition, so to speak, if it's, um, you know, if you have more than one person that you're able to work with. Otherwise, it's just a whole lot of fun to do these types of things. Now, I know that people want to go shopping. A lot of us like to shop. We like to shop for things we don't even need, but we just like to shop. Um, setting up an indoor sh um, shopping experience is a lot of fun. It's not only fun putting it together. It's a lot of fun to take someone shopping in your home. So what you do is pick a space in your home, whether it is you have a table from your garage, put it in your garage, put it in your house. You can have one long table, you could have in your kitchen on the counters, but we pull 
household items out or even pieces of clothing or something. And it's almost like we would trade off with each other, but we would actually set out items that would be for sale. And we actually have that shopping experience. Um, we came up with this years ago. We had um, um, one of our clients and we call him a client. She loves jewelry, loves jewelry. Now she has dementia or had dementia. And um, so a lot of times with dementia, you know, um, every five minutes can be kind of a new day, which a lot of times that could be a good thing. But so we, we would take once a week, she would go jewelry shopping and we would just take all of her jewelry out of her jewelry box and we would actually set it up on a couple of different tables. So she would use her walker and go from table to table to table. And she would see her jewelry. It was like she was seeing it for the first time. She had no idea it was her jewelry. And we would give her Monopoly money and let her pay for it. Um, since then, we graduated to actual, it looks like real money, um, but it's the stuff we got. Or we barter. But she just loved going jewelry shopping. She couldn't wait till each week come where she would get new jewelry. And most of the jewelry was stuff we were putting back out there again, other than her few pieces that she would wear every day. So it was just so much fun for her. Um, cooking. Cooking is always a lot of fun when you do it with somebody. If you have someone that you're really kind of not so, maybe you don't want to um, put them at a stove or anything like that. There are so many different types of recipes that you can Google out there. One of the ones that we use a lot is called muffin pizzas and they're so easy to do. Um, we take little bowls of ingredients and we, whatever you like, whether it's pineapple, pepperoni, um, cheese, mushrooms, green pepper, everything, little hamburger, whatever. And we would go get the um, pizza dough and we cut it into little squares and we actually stuff them down into the, into like a cupcake or a muffin pan. And then we just put a little sauce in there, start going to town. People can make them any way they want to. You just fold them over, you bake them for about 20 minutes or so usually we just follow the pizza recipe on the back of the dough and they will swell up and you have a wonderful muffin pizza and they got to help or, or really create and make dinner and it's you're not even by the oven or the stove making salads cookies different things that um you know starting to make ornaments for your tree Right now, a lot of people are, um, I've even seen where people are decorating their house for Christmas. They put the Christmas tree back up. Those are always joyous times. I would encourage everyone to think outside the box or not even have a box. And it doesn't matter if it's, you know, April and we're coming into summer. Put up some lights. Think about preparing for Christmas. Just think about how far ahead you could be, especially if your loved one or even yourself are able to start doing some homemade things, whether you crochet or you sew, or if they can help, there's so many things that are no sew um, that you can make these individual things and be having your Christmas list in mind and, and just think maybe by the time July comes along, we're all out ripping and running now back in the streets and you'll already have your uh, Christmas shopping done because you've made everything. And I find that People really take a big pleasure in making things. It means a lot to the recipient too when we've actually taken time to make something for somebody we were thinking about. So um, I know that also on the PDF that Darian spoke about, there are a lot, I've got several um, kind of websites that you can go on and they are virtual art museums, um, zoos. There are so many things you can do having the internet and putting yourself or a loved one in front of the computer and actually, it's just like taking a virtual tour in the safety of your own home. So there are so many different things that you can do. Um, and I'd love to hear from people, um, ideas that they have. I would love to share even more ideas with you, but um, I guess it's my time to kind of wrap it up. <laughs> so um, I really appreciate everyone's time today. Um, and I want everyone to stay safe, but I want them to stay happy and kind of just Chuck that anxiety in the back and know this too shall pass. Yes, thank you so much, Cheryl. Like definitely check out the resources list that she sent because there's a ton of ideas and instructions on how to do those things. Um, and one thing that you kept talking about was just being creative. I think this is a great, great opportunity to see what we can yes. put together. There's so much stuff in our house that we don't even know what's there sometimes. And it's a great chance yeah. to 
be as creative as you can be and use those items that you'd never think of using and put together some really fun art project. And um, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, we would love for you guys to share all of the things you are doing at home with us. You can email Care Partner Info, email us at info at carepartnerstexas.org. Um, and if there's anybody in the comments right now, you can let us know really quick, um, what are some of the things you've been doing or what are some of the things Cheryl talked about that you just can't wait to go try yourself? Um, she definitely talked about a lot of things. I love the different creative things. Like I think you talk about scrapbooking. Pictures are some of my favorite things in the world to just take pictures and then go take a chance and look back at them and, and remember what was going on at that time in your life. Um, and then the other thing you talked about was just really, you know, this too will pass and, and it will. Yeah. <laughs> um, if there's any other. You think about how far ahead for Christmas you'll be <laughs> or any holiday. You know, I'm, I'm, I hate to say this, but I can be late to people's birthdays and I hate it. Even my loved ones, I'd be late for my own birthday, but to be way ahead this year, that's something that will good come out of it, you know, but I have watched my sister is actually making lamps out of soda bottles and it's so interesting so I mean gosh if you think it if you can think it you can do it exactly and I think that's something that we'll we'll leave we'll leave with that thought everyone um, <laughs> just go find something fun to do today um, and and just worry about bringing up your spirits and focus on something good and positive um, and with that we are gonna sign off for today but just thank you guys so much for joining us um, we'll be back again tomorrow with some more um, Hot Topic Live segments. Have a great rest of your day. Awesome.